Yeah. Have any of you ever had an original thought in your life? Why the hell would I... Oh. Huh. So, let's kick this off with some general clarifications, because the title is very confusing and difficult to understand. Copper Short Sword Only means Copper Short Sword Only. You know, actually, now that I put it like that, it doesn't sound that complicated at all. I don't know why so many people had trouble understanding that. If it isn't a copper short sword, and it deals damage, I'm not using it. It doesn't matter if it's a damage over time effect, an accessory, an armor ability, or a contracted mercenary vessel in the Mediterranean Sea. I made a journey mode character in World because I had to, but I didn't have any intention of using journey mode powers except for what was absolutely necessary to beat the game. Oh, okay, that might have been a little bit of a lie. I did keep 10x spawns on for quite a while. Uh, I also made this a drunk seed for quicker access to an extremely important item that's necessary to beat the game. That item being uh, the, the, the copper short sword. You might notice there's a slight problem here. Uh, I don't have one, because you don't spawn with one in journey mode. So step one is finding copper and some iron or lead for an anvil. I find some copper in a chest pretty quickly, and then I get some lead from living trees. It's a little bit crowded, but I make my way through without a weapon easily enough and unlock my true power. And now, things get intense. Adrenaline is surging through my veins. Rage and anger, unparalleled, and... This is hitting twice. Oh, there's two gnomes there. That's why it's hitting twice. Okay, well, there's a pinky, and I'd like it dead. Uh, easier said than done on master mode, though. I craft a foolproof plan and trap, trap, nope. trap pinky in a box. Okay, fine, I load it out of the box. I didn't, I didn't even really want it in there anyway. It's isolated, and I can just... Okay, Pinky is just hacking at this point. Whatever, it's dying. It's dead. No, fish, bad, bad fish. House time. You can get up here, right? And now it's jungle time. I need to be here. I need two things. Feral claws and a sharpening station. That'll give me auto-swing on the short sword and 12 points of defense penetration, so, you know, I do more than one damage a hit. Unfortunately, uh, 10x spawns in the jungle with a barely functional weapon, 100 HP, and no defense is a little bit tricky. Uh, I couldn't get much loot, so I head back and I upgrade my house a bit. Thankfully, I am an expert at building, and I can quickly put together a beautiful house amidst the trees, towering high into the night sky. I get some HP underground and I go to the jungle, and I spend, like, the next five hours looking for a sharpening station. It's a large world and a massive jungle, but I just can't find one. Uh, while I'm searching, I get to 400 HP, and I go to the underground desert for a while to get mining potions and a chisel. I finally find a sharpening station and prepare to fight the eye. Now, you might be wondering, am I gonna have to pause time for the eye? I am on master mode, after all. And the answer is a resounding HELL NO! The copper short sword is not bad at all! It can easily kill the eye in nine minutes, as long as you've got the armor penetration from the sharpening station. It is quite a powerful weapon in the early and mid-game. It's only once you get to enemies that have 50-plus defense that it really falls off and starts taking dozens of hours to kill things. Trust me, I've beaten the game with a flare gun, and the copper short sword grossly outperforms the flare gun at every point except for the very end of the game. And that brings me to my next point. The problem with the Copper Short Sword is not the damage. The damage is fine. It's actually pretty damn good in comparison to other weak weapons like the Flare Gun and Paper Airplanes. The problem is 100% the range, and it is a huge problem. You cannot fight things with a Copper Short Sword and not take damage, at least not without an incredible amount of difficulty. You have to get hit to deal damage. You can't just fly around and dodge indefinitely. That is the difficult part, and that is why I have a full tank build. For the Eye of Cthulhu, I already have 42 defense, and that's still not really enough to tank comfortably in master mode. Remember, I don't need to take a couple hits, I need to be able to survive pretty much indefinitely. But the eye dies, and now it's killing time. All of this is on master mode, remember, and none of these are using journey mode powers. I head to the corruption, break an orb, and wait for some goblins. In the meantime, back to the underground desert. Again, copper short sword is not bad damage, this is effective, it's got knockback, speed, damage, the only thing it doesn't have is the range. Goblins finally show up, goblins die, and I get the ability to reforge my accessories to warding, and I maximize my defense. I also unlock the legendary copper short sword, the ultimate weapon that I will wield for the next... 120 hours? What the fuck? Okay, well, I need more houses for the goblin, so I make a resort in the oasis. The eater is up next, and thankfully he is extremely easy to face tank, and I just sit on top of... Okay, well, I upgrade to Molten Armor for a little more defense first, and then I face tank him. Now he's dead. It's mostly just dealing with a bunch of mouths from the eater that was difficult. 60 defense goes a long way, though. The brain is up next. I make a suitable arena, although increased spawn rate blood crawlers are not the easiest thing to deal with. I'm not on 10x spawns anymore, but they're still bumped up a little bit. The brain's first phase is pretty tricky due to all the debuffs. Broken armor is quite annoying, uh, but he dies without too much trouble once I get him to phase 2. I make a mountaintop ski resort for a few more NPCs and prepare to fight Deerclops. I got to learn a few fun things about Deerclops during this fight, including that his hitboxes are... Uh, yeah, uh, that. Uh, well, he's dead. B time! 
in keeping with tradition, I am going to fight her enraged on the surface, and that uh, might have been a little bit of a mistake, uh, and goblins quickly decided to show up. It took quite a while, but eventually Queen Bee got in some fights with some goblins, and I finished her off. I head deep into the rainforest and list an Airbnb there for some extra cash and upgrade my weapon. Now that Queen Bee is dead, the most powerful upgrade I'll have is available. From the witch doctor, I can buy imbuing flasks, and I can finally shower the world in confetti! We're getting on the pony train, and the first stop is King Slime, who is not a very notable boss and dies without too much trouble. And now we're at Skeletron, and things are a bit tricky. Unfortunately, I do not have the damage to kill him before daytime with a copper short sword on master mode. So what the hell do I do? Do I pause time? Do I use an imbuing flask or a magma stone to deal more damage to kill him at night? Do I lower the difficulty? Hell no, we're hoiking this bitch. I kill his hands and I drop him down to 5k HP at night thanks to a few falling stars and I get him inside of a hoik loop. From here, he cannot kill me and I slowly whittle him down. I needed to use a massive copper short sword and not a legendary one because, genuinely, the like one extra pixel from a massive sword was the difference between being able to hit him and not being able to hit him. I do use a flask of fire during the day and it's the only time I use a damage over time effect flask for the entire game because I did this on stream and I didn't want to spend 20 hours in a hoik loop killing him. But Skeletron finally dies. I get some loot from the dungeon, notably a cobalt shield, and I take out the wall of flesh. Unfortunately, I didn't think it was plausible to kill the Wall of Flesh on any difficulty above Classic with a Copper Short Sword and pre hard mode gear. That means that we don't have a Demon Heart. I've already got a show for you. Well, that's a problem that I'll solve later. It's hard mode now, and I start with upgrading my armor and accessories. I get full Adamantite and some Ichor. Ichor flasks are one of the only ones that don't deal damage over time, so I can actually use them. It won't help against the Destroyer, though, and that's who we're fighting first. For the mechanical bosses, I have to pause time for them to be possible, which means I can keep going back and forth between spawn and the ocean to kill the Destroyer. From this point forward, I'm fighting every boss on expert mode, not master. The probes are the biggest issue, and once they're all dead, I can whittle down the worm itself. I stopped to do some fishing for wrath potions, because the extra damage was actually relevant here, and game crashed. Okay, well this is a good point to mention this. Uh, if the game crashes, or if I lose power, or something similar, I'm not going to restart a long boss fight from the very beginning. For the destroyer, I just came back the next day and got him to the HP value that he was at with the probes gone, using my axe and the pickaxe, and then I picked up the fight from there. Uh, this is the part where I'd insert that line about filing a complaint, but I've already made that joke, like, three times. The destroyer dies, and I move on to the twins. Now, there's a bug with Ichor that gives enemies a negative defense when you combine it with another source of defense penetration. Uh, this is most notable when you use the blade staff, but it also happens with melee weapons in a shopping station. As a result, I actually deal extra damage to the twins in phase one. But phase one is the easy part. I need to figure out how the hell to survive spasmatism in phase two, because this is not working. I rethink things and get some different accessories. I get more defense, get a cross necklace, and finally get a demon heart. It takes most of a large sized world covered in asphalt, a mountain of defense, and a huge amount of HP regen, but I finally take out the wall of flesh on expert mode and get back to the twins. It's very tricky. Spasmatism does a lot of damage, and Cursed Flames doesn't care about my defense at all. I don't use the nurse at all during any of the bosses in this one, she was just nearby, but I managed to get through spasmatism and take out Retinazer next. I also upgrade my wings by hunting some moths, although it wasn't the fastest to do. Oh, moth, 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 moth. With the two older siblings gone, I pick on the youngest and weakest of the mechanical bosses. Skeletron Prime is not remotely threatening. I stay right on top of him all the time, and he does next to no damage. He dies in about 45 minutes. For comparison, the twins were about an hour and a half, and the destroyer about five hours. I build an arena for Plantera and take her out next. I use lava on the floor to disable enemy spawns and face tank her in phase one. Her contact damage is not enough to be a threat yet, and I alternate taking damage and running away to regenerate health. Now phase two is when things get a little bit dicey. She hits a lot harder, and I have to alternate attacking and healing a lot more. Thankfully, her defense drops down quite a lot, and I slaughter the plant. I switch my armor up a bit, incorporating total armor in a hollowed mask for more defense, and then I take out Golem. He's, uh, he's, he's struggling. I take out the hands, and then the head, and then nobody believed me! When I was beating the game with a flare gun, nobody believed me. I kept mentioning that Golem would take lava damage, and nobody believed me. I wasn't even trying to use lava to kill him here. I just happened to bring him into Plantera's arena, but nobody believed me. I don't care what the wiki says. I told you, Golem takes lava damage. Well, he's dead. Uh, I get a sunstone and a pixar, and now the real challenge begins. Up to this point has only taken a little over 40 hours. The next four bosses will take 90 hours. 90 hours in addition to the 40, not combined with it. And the first of these four bosses is Duke Fishron. And holy hell, Duke Fishron is a difficult boss. Genuinely, I think he was the single most challenging boss in the game that I had to kill with a copper short sword. He took the second longest, and that's mostly just because I got lucky with some falling stars. So what makes Duke Fishron such a challenge? There are three things. Firstly, he has a ton of defense. Secondly, he deals a ton of damage. Thirdly, he is extremely aggressive. 
I made an ocean arena, loaded up on iron skin and regen potions, and got things started. The thing is, I didn't get an onk shield, and I really should have. I had to deal with confusion, cursed, and a lot of other debuffs that made the fight a lot more difficult than it needed to be. I spent four days on Fishron, pausing the game each night and unpausing the next morning. Once we hit phase two, Fishron's defense drops to 40 and my damage goes up. But his damage also goes way, way up. The stakes get high, but the Falling Stars do me a favor and I get him to phase three. And it's here that things get serious. I am tired. I have been fighting him for hours and for days. But I can't let exhaustion overwhelm me. I can't slip up at all or I've got dozens of hours of work to get back here. Fishron gets close to killing me, but I stabilize and I cut him down. I'm barely dodging his dashes intentionally because I need to get extremely close to get him within range of my short sword without getting hit. His defense drops to zero, but his attacks are relentless. Like I said, the range is the issue. I have to get right next to Fishron and he will hit me sometimes. I can't just dodge like he would with a weapon that has more range. But after about 26 hours, he dies and I get my prize. The Shrimpy Truffle. Learning from Duke Fishron, I prepared a lot more for the Empress. I get a frozen shield and a hero shield, and farming the dungeon was a mess that I did off stream, a celestial shell, and a ton of bacon. I make an arena in the hollow, and I pause time at night in the rain. I decided that having time unpaused would be extremely boring because I'd have to spend most of the time dodging and unable to attack, and that would make the fight drag on for a rather absurd length of time. Since time is paused, the rain won't stop, and I can chase her on the truffle indefinitely. She does very little contact damage, and all I have to do is stay on top of her. It's difficult, though, because she's extremely evasive. Her second phase actually gets much easier because she doesn't dodge nearly as well that I can stay on top of her for a longer period of time. She dies after about 15 or 16 hours, and I move straight on to the cultist. His first phase is quite slow, and although he isn't dangerous, he's immune to all debuffs, and I can't cut through his defense without Ikor. I flooded the area with water to use the truffle, and I cut him down. Once he gets to phase 2, his defense drops enough for me to deal more than one damage a hit, and he dies shortly after. I did spawn a phantasm dragon intentionally, though, just to give him a fighting chance. And the pillars... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. I make some pools of lava and jump into them to kill the enemies, and then I cut down the pillars. Well, I prepared for the Moon Lord in the same way as the cultist, flooding the entire world. Uh, uh, except for after about half an hour this happened, and uh, I had to rework my entire arena, and because I was streaming this, I went ahead and just did it in T-Edit to save time. I went to a backup save that was not flooded, put in some campfires and heartlanterns, and I got back the chest full of potions and other things. Unfortunately, in doing this, I lost my teleporter setup, and I also lost my magic conch, and that's gonna be a problem later. But for now, I use Journey Mode to set it to rain permanently as an effective replacement for the flooded world. The alternative would have been putting water pockets and bubble blocks everywhere, which meant I would have had to wait another week to kill the Moon Lord because I would have had to build the arena. When fighting the Moon Lord with low damage, the only thing that's important is avoiding his healing. If you didn't know, the Moon Lord has a very potent self-healing mechanic. It's tied to the Moonbite debuff that he inflicts with his tongue. In order to avoid the healing, you need to avoid the debuff or kill the 400 HP leeches, for obvious reasons I can't do that one, which means my options are preventing the tongue from spawning in the first place with an exploit curing the debuff, or dodging the tongue. The first two options are just cheesing the boss, so we're doing the latter because it's actually difficult. I've seen plenty of people do the first two ways, and I'm doing it this way because I think this is how it should be done, but nobody seems to ever do it this way. The tongue travels at about 83 miles per hour, and I'm using the shrimpy truffle in the rain to outpace it. This is by no means the only option to move this fast, it's just the one that I'm using. In phase one, dodging the tongue is pretty easy, the hands only have 40 defense, and I can get 32 points of defense penetration and deal actual damage. The top eyes Louisiana kitchen has 50 defense, so that's a bit trickier. I have to whittle it down with one damage hits. It takes a while, but I finally get him down to phase 2. And now is the difficult part. The main issue is that in phase 2, the Moon Lord's tongue starts going out on a 5 second cooldown instead of a 15 second cooldown. And that gives me an extremely narrow window of opportunity to attack, and letting him heal would erase a lot of progress. I need to go right next to where the tongue comes out to deal damage. Again, this is why I said the difficult part was the range, not the damage. A ranged weapon doesn't have to worry about that because you can just stay far away. In less than 5 seconds, I need to recognize when the tongue is going back, go in, hit it a few times, get out, fly away, and then do that repeatedly. While doing this, I have to also survive the true eyes of Cthulhu and I can't afford to mess up at all. A single tongue hit in phase 2 can heal him for up to 6,000 hit points. Also, there's another part of this fight that many people seem to misunderstand. No, the Moon Lord's true eyes of Cthulhu will not automatically despawn. If you've seen other people fight the Moon Lord with low damage, you may have noticed that happen. Now, I'm not certain on the exact mechanics of why. It's either a result of the eyes being off screen or the result of them teleporting, uh, but the reason the eyes despawn during other people's fights is because they were using one of the other strategies I mentioned before, healing with the nurse or using an exploit, that allowed them to sit still and keep the eyes on screen, after which they eventually despawned. That is not what I did, so that is not what happened. 
It takes me a while to get down a consistent strategy, and the first day I fought phase 2 I made almost no progress whatsoever due to the healing. I had to make a pickaxe to even out some terrain, and also an axe, because apparently the glorified pickaxe isn't also an axe. I also had to stop reading chat. Looking off screen for even a second was causing me to occasionally get hit by the tongue, and I would make no progress at all. I could prevent his healing with clever use of teleport, since the leeches despawn like regular enemies, but my teleporter setup and my magic conch are gone because those were in the flooded world. All I have is my magic mirror, and the timing window to avoid his healing is extremely tight using that. It was a struggle of eldritch gods, both existing outside of the bounds of time. He would heal the damage I dealt to him, and my own wounds would close in seconds. He made the game unplayable by dropping the FPS. He crashed my game. I lost power during the fight. None of that was going to stop me. The Moon Lord made one fatal mistake. He thought he could triumph over my will when he found my body unbreakable. An endless storm raged on, blinding the heavens to our struggle for six days. Collectively, over thirty hours. But I finally struck the killing blow. The Moon Lord died, and now I had beaten the entire game with only a copper short sword. The demon eyes, freed from their prison at last, came to thank me as the world rejoiced in celebration. It took around 130 hours, almost all of which was streamed here on YouTube. I've unlisted most of the streams and put them in a playlist that's linked in the description below. You can still go and watch the streams, and these are the points where I fought each boss. I also have a Discord server now, and I'll put the link to that in the description below. That's where I put announcements about streams and videos, schedules, subscription goals, along with a lot of other miscellaneous things. And, while I may have beaten the entire game with a short sword, I'm not quite done yet. I intend to fight the Daytime Empress of Light as well, albeit using Frost Armor, a Fire Gauntlet, and a Flask of Venom. Keep an eye out, because I'll be doing that soon. But for now, holy hell I'm exhausted. Grinding the Moon Lord took a lot of energy out of me. This is goodbye, for now.